Well, Will's on vacation. So, Billy, what do we call this podcast? We can call it the Krilly Cast. This is the Krilly Cast. No, no. Can't, I can't do that. I'm, I'm Chris. And I'm Billy. Welcome to the Krill Cast. The Krill Cast. <laughs> I'm Billy from Vizn Awesome, by the way. Um, on my channel, we are actually doing a 24 hour live stream that's going to Beaumont Children's Hospital. If you've seen me try to pronounce that 10 million times, I for some reason can't. Uh, but then it's actually hosted by Extra Life or Extra Life dot org. Um, but I'm running it off Twitch TV, where my channel is Vizn Awesome on there. Uh, we're doing that September 28th to the 29th. It's going to start at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, if you guys tune in, any of the donations go straight towards um, uh, Beaumont Children's Hospital. But uh, we're going to be playing it. We're going to be giving stuff away. We're going to be giving off uh, some games, some codes for Borderlands 3, um, a couple of cool things that are coming out there, um, some physical stuff. And we're going to be doing challenges because it would be boring if we didn't. But... <laughs> but um, if you guys tune in, that, that would be awesome. And if anybody, again, it's all going towards charity. That's something I believe in. Even though I'm terribly nervous about talking about charities for some reason, I just feel like I can't <laughs> give them the information that they give. But, um, but yeah, September 28th to the 29th at 6 p.m. Eastern. Check awesome. Out on- I'm going to do my best attempt at what Will did for Wild Card Wednesday last week. He goes, it's Wild Card Wednesday. <laughs> Will is living through spirit. Oh, I know, I know. Um, so, anyways, uh, Bioware, right? Um, it was it was originally formed on May twenty second, nineteen ninety five. I have no idea what they did before they made Knights of the Old Republic, but they were around from May twenty second, nineteen ninety five, all the way through present day. One of the few companies that I can say I know of that has lasted quite a long time, as far as a third party developer is concerned. Uh, they were acquired by EA, unfortunately, October 11, 2007, just around the time of Mass Effect 1, right? <laughs> Probably one of my favorite games. You know? yeah. yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, so I just want to talk about some of their highlights prior to the EA, the EA uh, purchase, let's call it. Well, what, do you, what was your first uh, experience with Bioware? Um, believe it or not, it started off with Mass Effect 2. Like I, really? I, I actually, like, I never played a Bioware game. And then I can actually, like, legitimately, this is one of my favorite companies of all time. It, like, oh, yeah. The rise and the fall. So I can tell you exactly when I, like, seen. <laughs> um, it was actually a GameStop commercial. Like, and you probably can find this on any, like, lovely YouTube site or any YouTuber's thing. But um, it was the commercial where it was... Uh, Thane, Miranda, and uh, Commander Shepard, like, all aiming down sights, and then they had, like, a really <laughs> funny, like, uh, song to it or something, but it was, like, advertising the pre-order skins where you got something, but, like, uh, the moment I heard that you can recruit anybody and, like, you can change your team out depending on whatever you wanted and all of the interaction options they had, I was like, dude, that's, like, real, like, that sounded super interesting, and um, from there, like, I, I started shoveling snow until I got enough money to get <laughs> Mass Effect 2. That's but, awesome. But yeah, that's how I started. And then I, I went back. I played uh, Knights of the Old Republic. I played Mass Effect 1, all the Dragon Ages. Like, any game they made, I played to, because I was in love with their, um, like, companionship system and how they did everything. It was really rich storytelling. Do you know what, uh, what, what I would consider the closest relationship game to Mass Effect? Huh. Our two Bioware's system would be probably the Persona series. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. And and it's kind of funny when you think about it. Like, you got the Mass Effect series on one hand is a shooter with social links, right? So Or social settings, whatever you want to call it. Then you've got an RPG with social settings, right? Those two game genres didn't exist prior to these companies implementing them. And now you've got Fire Emblem Three Houses trying to do the same thing. Just a tactical oh. RPG, but... That's it's it's beautiful because like it's they set such a tone for how like uh, like rich storytelling and like character development should be, and then you know it got crazy. But like <laughs> it was it was fantastic because those games like like I mean they, what they built is like 
like a new way for most of us to experience like true storytelling and i i give them that credit like they like most of them have earned that and i'm very happy that they i would say up through mass effect 2 i would i would have literally bought anything bioware made Mm -hmm. from back from mass effect 2 and backwards i would have bought any of it i i really loved what bioware was doing and then you have the acquisition of EA by EA, right? And they and they still produce good games post EA. They had Mass Effect 2, which was a post EA game. Mm -hmm. They had um, Dragon Age Origins, that was the first Dragon Age game, I believe, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yep, yep. Okay. Origins is first. Um, they had Star Wars: The Old Republic, which was an MMO. Still Yay. played it. <laughs> oh, listen, listen. Oh, I will. I. It was. It was. Eh, but it was. It was fun. Eh. I saw the commercial that they had for it, and I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be, this is the, this is the stuff, right? And then I opened it up one time to try it out, and I was like, really? This is what this is? Like, uh, it's just like a WoW clone with Star Wars. Yeah. Like, that's how I felt about it. No, you're right. Like, my, my biggest thing is, like, you know, now it's been upgraded, and da-da-da, I can speak on 10 million things, but... Like, the boil-down version of it is, like, it, it was cool because it gave you the dialogue options and it gave you the choices yeah. to change. But, like, on your side, um, the grind was way too, like, it made it so unbearable at some points that I was well, like, I just don't want to finish the story. Like, it's... it's in my weird. opinion, nobody has figured out the massive multiplayer shooter yet. No, no. Correctly. I, because it's so difficult to have a, a real story in a MMO based around a shooter. Mm -hmm. And if you allow the cooperative levels like Destiny did, I never got into any of the lore of Destiny. I never really got any interest in it, to be totally honest with you. I thought Bungie did much better storytelling in their original Halo trilogy than they ever did with Destiny. I, my, I'm very glad that my fiance um, is not watching at the moment, but I agree wholeheartedly because I I've played. Does Destiny. she like Destiny a lot? He is a huge Destiny fan. Like I, I, I don't know. Like I just don't think you can do as good with storytelling if it's not a single player driven story. Because it's it's like I mean. There's no variance. Right, and that's that's exactly it. Is like what makes you feel special when it's like seven of you and all of you are the chosen one and all of you. Right. Like it's it's I don't know it, I don't I didn't like it either I agree with you. Well, even even like the game Catherine had multiple endings and it was it was like they felt like there was some worth in the decisions you made right. Mm -hmm. That's kind of why Mass Effect Three, in my opinion, is one of the biggest disappointments that the EA Bioware has ever put out. Yeah. You know I've, you've messed up when there's a video on YouTube explaining why the developers did like why the the theory of what actually happened at the end gets more views than the actual trailer for the game. Do you ever see the indoctrination theory? Yep. Was, yes, I have. Oh my God. EA should have just said, Oh yeah, that's it. Yep. You guys had that a good idea. Awesome. It's, it's why, like, it's, oh, why okay. spend the time to write a separate alternate ending to the one all the fans were okay with. Mm -hmm. like, and, and you could have totally sold it. It was so easy. Everything was there. All the puzzle pieces were there. It was like EA was just basically like, nah, our ending was good, man. <laughs> but that's really what it felt like. It's like, okay, so you guys are completely throwing it out the window. Like, we just we just don't care. We're better than you guys, you know? Like, this is the ending that you get. This is the alternate ending you can have since you guys all whined and complain. And we're going to throw some DLC in the mix so you can pay some money. Oh, man, that was like... It was funny, because, like, um, when I beat Mass Effect, man, like, I was... Because, like, I love Mass Effect 3 up until the, like, up until the ending. Like, truth, I mean, like, I'm, listen, I'll be a, I'll be a, like... Up until the, the beam of light shot out, I was yeah. all on board. And, and that's then, what, like, like, the story was so driving, and then when they did that, like, it wasn't that, like, we didn't understand the ending, or it wasn't, like... Oh, yeah, like, yeah, no. Like, it was legitimately... <laughs> There was no difference. Like it just felt like you just got punched in it the gut. It felt glass. cheap. Yeah. And that's the the reason Mass Effect Three, in my opinion, was such an utter failure at the ending, was entirely due to the fact that none of my choice, like for a game that involved so many choices, it felt like none of my choices mattered. 
Right. And that's that's what's kind of sad, too, is like like they put in. And that was the thing that like got me is the interview with Casey Hudson, the director at the time, was like, yeah, it's not going to be your vanilla one, two, three ABC ending. Like it's going to be like very different. And then nothing was different. And then <laughs> they tried. And then they were like, yeah, oh, whoops. Like, oh, it's a little bit different. Like, oh. You're like and it just it soured. And like and that was like the downfall. Like that began the downfall for Bioware for me. Like it started killing me after that point. They could have saved the whole franchise by releasing Mass Effect Four. Yeah, and not Andromeda. <laughs> yeah, yep. Oh. But they had all their real Bioware engineers working on Anthem. Yeah, Project Dylan, the the very super awesome thing that went really well. Uh, yeah, man. yeah. And, and you can really see. You really see some of the elements of Mass Effect Andromeda in Anthem. I've noticed yeah. that it seems yeah. like they borrowed assets from Mass Effect Andromeda and put them in Anthem. Well, even, like, the main character, like, uh, Ryder of Andromeda, which is your main character, like, the costume, I mean, their space outfit is, like, like I mean, change some colors and add a few jetpacks. Like, it, it's almost the same thing. I was not impressed with Mass Effect Andromeda. What they really should do is have a team at Bioware re-release the Mass Effect trilogy and change the ending. <laughs> and just fix it. Just fix I mean, Halo 2 was cool. They added some stuff on when they remade Halo 2 for the Master Chief Collection. Who's to say EA couldn't fix Mass Effect by re-releasing the trilogy? At, I mean, sure, they'll probably release it at $60, even though it's games they've already got oh. that just have to go from 720 to, like, Maybe even 1080 would be suffice, you know, sufficient. You gotta buy 10 million loot packs just to get the real ending and all your characters. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Just, just, but, just up, re- remaster it, upscale to either 4K or 1080p. I really don't care. And then call it a day or fix the ending. No, I. Mean, I, I think I, about I, how much how much programming it would really take to add separate endings at this they point. Don't even, they don't even have to bring the actors or actresses back. Like, true, you can get Mark Mir and Jennifer, I can't think of her last name, to literally come in and voice Shepard, and the rest of them could be just picture shows like they did for the extended end. Extended sure. End. 100%. Or even if, if you don't want to redo the endings, instead of having a legitimate ending, just do, like, comic book strips or something at the end. Like, yeah. they did that with the... Uh, um, Mass Effect 2 on the PS3, there was that comic strip you could choose different things in. Oh, Genesis? Yeah, yeah Genesis. That's right, that's right. I thought that was pretty neat for people that never played Mass Effect 1 because it was so tied up with Microsoft and Xbox because they had partnered with EA and Bioware to make the first one. Oh, yeah, yep. Um, that licensing is kind of screwy. You know what? Like, it's funny, too, because, like, um, like, a lot of people... And, like, not to... It's still... But for like Andromeda, man, like I, it could have been a better game. Like, oh really, yeah. And it's it sucks because like, the things they took out of it were like, uh, like, I, they tried to advertise as like better enhancements, like open world and and open world. Companies gotta stop doing that, man. Like, they, they do. Not every they, game needs to be open world. No, and Mass Effect was perfect for linear. Like it's. it's and they had great story. gunplay. Mm-hmm. And once you go to open world and you got the different perspective, that really tight, nice gunplay goes away. Yeah, and it's... It just it's, doesn't happen. Like, it didn't need... And the other part of it, too, was, like... And I hate to say it, because I get it. They got to write a new story. Like, that's fine. I understand. But, like, going from the military aspect to, like, uh, where you, like, you had to... Exploration. Involve your, yeah, and, like, it made you feel yeah. like, like a pacifist, almost. And that's not what we want from Mass Effect. No. It'd be like saying, hey, the Master Chief is going to try not to kill aliens. Yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> like, this is not going to happen. Oh, God. I, that's why, like, like totally, I'm, I'm very scared for, like, I don't want to say, and I hate saying that, because I've bought, like, I've bought and I actually own the collector's edition of Mass Effect Andromeda, unfortunately. Um, but I've got the complete it, edition, I think. Or deluxe edition, whatever the release day edition was. I'm so we're we're both sorry, man. I feel you. <laughs> but I got I got it for pennies on the dollar, like like a year after they still had stock on Amazon for like ten dollars brand new. I was like, I'll try no. it. <laughs> my Christmas gift was I talked to my fiance. I was like, 
I was like, dude, collector's edition with a remote control RC of the oh Nomad. My God. Yes. Two hundred fifty nine dollars <laughs> later, I'm sad. But oh, but um, it's like it's funny because like uh, I'm I'm but back to yeah I'm, I'm scared because I don't want them to uh, like Dragon Age Four is coming out and that's like I don't know if I want to put anything down towards it because I'm nervous. Well, and that might be the final straw if they don't if they don't release it and have a success. Yeah. To be honest with you, EA is not one to hold on to companies that that don't turn a dollar for them. I I thought Anthem was gonna like I know Anthem was technically successful in the first month, but like since then it just hit the EA access pass and it just hit like a lot of things that kind of spell doom for a lot of games and yeah. I don't know. I yeah. I'm sad the way that i look at this right now is you know how these companies get saved is when they a either get spun off like bungie did with activision or mm. b they get bought by microsoft sony or nintendo yeah that's how you save these games these companies because microsoft's buying up all these small studios that otherwise have to rely on a big publisher to publish them right yeah i would be i would be on the xbox train if they brought in Bioware and bought the license to Mass Effect. Oh, I would be man. 100% yeah. on board with Xbox at that point in time. See, I agree. I like it truthfully. I mean, if they, if the series was saved by that, like in a heartbeat, I would go back. Cause like, it's not like, even when I played Andromeda, man, like the sole reason I bought that game was to see more about Mass Effect's original yep. trilogy. So make a four. Like I would, God, I would invest money into that. Or Mass Effect the prequel. That would even be cool, man. Like, like just do one where the, the humans meet up with all the alien races, like where they discover the mass. Like there's a whole backstory to Mass Effect one that we just don't get. The first contact war would be fantastic. That would be so cool. That'd yeah. be so cool. I mean, that, dude, I, that'd be a perfect cool. Halo story almost. <laughs> it really would. It truly would. <laughs> That, that would be Microsoft can make a new Halo game without actually making a Halo game. <laughs> They'd be like, look, guys, we we did do it right. We got this. <laughs> and then just pretend like Mass Effect and drama that has never happened. Oh, man. That's what um, I think a lot of people were joking that uh, I don't even know if it was a joke. I think they were like serious. But Bioware was like totally stepping back from it. And you're, and oh, yeah. They're just like, yeah, let's just pretend that Andromeda never happened. And they did. I mean, after they released the final updates to it, they're like, all right, we're just gonna leave it the way it is in the current state. We're peace out. That's so sad. It hurts my heart, man. So, anyways, uh, at this point in time, you know, Bioware has had a lengthy life lifespan from 1995 to the present day. Let's hope they actually make some good games and continue to survive. I agree. Keep keep it rocking, Bioware. That's our wild card Wednesday topic. It's been fun. I'm Chris. And I'm Billy. And we will see you on the next Krillicast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>